And now back to our main topic this evening on the U.S. elections and how its outcome will shape the future of Ukraine. And joining me now to talk about this is Kira Rudik, Ukrainian MP at The Voice Party. Good evening. Thank you so much for being with us here on uh, World Talks uh, this evening. Hello, Diana, and thank you so much for having me. Ms. Rudik, now what everyone is trying to figure out in Europe and especially in uh, in Ukraine, of course, is how this election result will impact uh, the war, the future of Ukraine, uh, the impact it will have on U.S.-Europe relations moving forward. Now, what are the key issues in this U.S. presidential race that you believe will have the greatest impact on Ukraine's future security and sovereignty, especially in terms of uh, economic support uh, and, and military as well? So for us, it is critical that these elections are happening, right? Because the delays and everything that were related uh, to the delays that are happening before the elections, the decisions that are not being made because of the U.S. elections, the, uh, for example, decision of allowing Ukraine to shoot inside Russia's territory, which uh, was postponed till after the elections, etc. Uh, President Zelensky recently announced that only 10 percent of the uh, U.S. support that was promised at the beginning of the year was delivered to Ukraine. So it's not an over-exaggeration to say that for us, uh, no matter the outcome, the fact that the elections will pass, American people will make their choice and allow us to continue to pursue our path to ending the war to the victory is critical for us as a fact. Second point, of course, uh, both candidates have made their positions uh, in terms of the support for Ukraine. And uh, we have heard Kamala Harris saying that she will continue on President Biden's approach, which we see is uh, slower than expected and is not allowing us to win the war, to make this final hit. So we are very grateful for everything that we have received at this point. And Donald Trump and his team are promising to end the war just in one day, which I think is uh, a classic a search for a simple solution to the complicated problems. And we know that it sounds very good when you are campaigning, but it's not such a good idea in reality. This is why for us, it's important to emphasize that we are willing and ready to work with whoever American people will elect. And we will continue being grateful for that bipartisan support of the Congress and Senate and all the good things that happened. However, for us, we need to understand and have a proof that the leader of the democratic world will continue supporting the country that is fighting for the democratic values, for the same things. And you know, being a leader of the uh, democratic world means that you can stand for the things that you believe in and that you are able to support the uh, others who are believing in the same things. So for us, the main thing would be what would happen between the elections and, uh, so let me the, ask you, let me, let me just jump in to interrupt you here for, for a moment here. Now, um, I mean, you're talking about that. You, you mentioned, of course, uh, waiting, of course, to get more aid and stuff. Now, given the current U.S. debate over the level of military aid to Ukraine, what would a change in administration mean for Ukraine's long-term military strategy and defense capabilities? I mean, you're saying, of course, that Ukraine will be ready to work with whoever wins. But what exactly here now? So we indeed would be working with whoever wins. However, we uh, understand that the policy for Ukraine has not been set up in stone for both of the parties and both for the, of the candidates. So the main goal for us is, of course, to become members of NATO. And this is what I was explaining to you, that we see an opportunity for ourselves to continue working with President Biden in between the elections that are happening right now and him stepping down as the president in January of the next year. And we see an opportunity for Ukraine uh, having President Biden uh, having his final say in his political career of doing something really big for the democracy and getting us the invitation to NATO or perhaps promising or pushing the allies to get us the long-term <clears throat> strategic support that we really desperately need. Because what we see is that Russia and its allies, China, North Korea, and Iran, 
they are getting stronger, they are producing more and more weapons, and we need to figure out like what the Western response would be. And the politics of uh, isolation that we have heard um, being debated uh, during this, uh, this campaign uh, is, is only will help uh, the axis of evil to grow stronger. And we want to be heard of what danger it poses for not only for Ukraine, but for the rest of the Europe, for the rest of the democratic world. Uh, so we really Rudy, let me ask you, let me, let me also ask you this. How much do you think that this U.S. election uh, outcome will influence Ukraine's path towards uh, greater integration with the West, particularly become uh, uh, in terms of NATO and EU membership? So for, uh, for the NATO membership, I think these elections will be critical. Again, because our hopes are not only for the results of the elections, but also for what can happen in between uh, and, uh, um, uh, and how much of the political influence or leverage uh, the current President Biden would want to leave. And the second matter is about EU integration. Well, here I believe uh, the United States are being supportive, but it's on EU and ourselves. And we are doing uh, a very intense work on getting us into EU as fast as possible. The questions about uh, American involvement into European politics uh, is due right now. And I think we need to be looking at who will be sitting in White House in terms of not uh, US-Ukraine, but actually U.S. European Union relations and how that would work and how the global security would look like. I want to emphasize again that if we are looking at the, at the global stability, we are fighting right now against the precedent. The precedent that in 21st century, one country can annex the territory of another one, can commit all kinds of the war crimes and just try to get away with it. And I believe that candidates to the, to the U.S. president can say they will just stop it. But I do not believe that the leader of the democratic world Thank can you, afford to allow the authoritarian regime to win. Thank you so much, Mrs. Riddick, for breaking it down to us. Of course, these U.S. elections are going to be very crucial for the outcome and for the future of Ukraine and its direction. Thank you for being with us here on World News Tonight on TVP World. Thank you.